But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. As holes. The prophet as tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Look like we have already some Abdul in the chat and they are welcome. And as usual, the Abdul, they are the best one to make comment. As an example, we have a person here. His name is Ant Card. Uh, I don't know. His name is Ant. And Mr. Ant is complaining about uh, some Christian. They have images of Jesus. Yeah. And he's asking, is that how Jesus looked like? And this is what is hurting his feeling. It's not hurting his feeling that the Quran says that you should be, make images of a prophet, statues of a prophet, but it hurt his feeling that there is some Christians, they make images of Jesus. Is that how he looked like? <laughs> Do even those by Abdul knew what is written in their book? Their silly book, the Quran, the yellow page of Muhammad? If we go right now to the Quran, even though that's not our topic, but just for Allah. Isn't it, this is your stupid book? Allah, he, he gave an order to his prophet to build temples full of statues and images. And the brother, brother, if you look at the Muslim translation, it says images. The word statues is gone. The word statues is gone. You change the translator. We go to different Abdul. Because every Abdul, he have different Quran. And the proof in front of you. Different words, different meaning, different story. This guy is saying images only. Mm -hmm. Let us go to different Abdul. Keep trying. Don't give up. And tell the truth, show up. One of them, by mistake, he will say the truth and the word statues will appear. Oh, okay, there is no statues here. Uh huh. Ah, there's a statues. Abdul? So you are coming to the Christian, and by the way, your name is Ant. Shouldn't you make an, a statues for the ant who spoke to Solomon? And Solomon, he could understood his speech? I mean, the Muslims, I mean, your story doesn't make sense. How you were, how you have images of Jesus? Oh boy. Let us go to our topic. The Abduls non-stop, they attack always the Bible, right? As we see, always. But you see, the, the silliness of Islam is beyond imagination. I want a Muslim who agree that the book of Allah, aka the Bible of Allah, is corrupted. If you believe in that, please let us know. Show me your text. If you are a Muhammadan here, don't hesitate to say, I agree. Who is a Muslim here agree that the Bible of Allah is corrupted? I'm not going to wait for you. There's a thousand of videos. I'm not going to play any of them. Actually, we have the image of this uh, Sheikh uh, Uthman, the ketchup boy, and he is speaking about the corruption of the Bible, brother. But look what the Muslim did to themselves. This is additional reason for anyone not to believe in the stupidity of Islam. Why? If Allah is the one who sent the Torah, and Allah is the one who sent the Injil, then why Allah did not protect his Torah and his Injil. 
somebody saying Kings 24 8 and uh, Chronicle 36 9 contradiction no this is a contradiction for you because you are a fool like your prophet if you go and calculate the numbers they will speak about the dynasty of the family who rule it's the same number but for a, for an ignorant like you he will think this is a contradiction however if this is a contradiction this is your stupid prophet Muhammad he take an oath on the same book you are speaking of and he is saying I believe in thee <laughs> so you Muslims are really weird and very funny in one hand we find your prophet uh, swear by it in other hand you Muslims are looking for a contradiction <laughs> So, are you saying your prophet, he swear by a book full of contradiction? Was he a hypocrite? Was it he? Huh? So, this is your stupid prophet taking an oath. He said to the Jews, bring me your book. They brought him the books. He put it in a cushion. He took the cushion from underneath of him and he respected the book very much. And then he said, he put his hand on it and he says, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. But the poor you is looking for a contradiction. And you know, the book is you are even speaking of. You see, even if those book is even that exist, they will not add anything. They will not take anything. You know, the Muslim, when they speak, they are like a chicken, and but it's a rooster trying to lay eggs. Did you ask yourself even what this book is about? This is a book of history. It's not about God speaking. This king, he lived here. This king, he died there. This king, he have a son. This guy, he have a wife. This guy was a bad. This is not God. The Quran is the book of God, supposedly, and everything in the Quran, word by word, is by God, right? But the Quran is a book of stupidity. All of it is contradiction. Your God, Allah, did not even remember which one he created first, the stars or the mountains. One verse of the stars, one verse of the mountains. So at least when you want to bring a contradiction, bring something can make a difference. Let us say for the sake of argument, that was a mistake. But that is just a history. This is not God talking. <laughs> do you see the stupidity so here we have a, your prophet swearing by a book he cannot even read this book is written in Torah in, in, in Hebrew how he say I believe in thee do he knew what is inside and not only he said I believe in thee he said I believe in thee and the one who sent thee so Muhammad here is denying his God Allah and he suddenly he believed in the God of the Jews he's a hypocrite if the Torah and the, 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 the book of the Christians is wrong, and then Muhammad, he say, I believe in you. I believe even in the one who sent thee. And we know that the one who sent thee is not Allah. And he believe in thee. And in the, in the same time, the Quran says that the Jews, they say, they believe that Uzair is a son of Allah. So how the Edith Muhammad, he says, he believe in thee. And thee, supposedly, have a story about Uzair. Do you remember Mimi Hijab when he was speaking to David Wood? He says to him, not a single Jew, not a single Jew believe God has a son. Not a single Jew believe in Trinity. So, this is the Quran says all the Jews believe that God has a son. And this is what happened when you debate idiots. And you have to take advantage of those idiots. You know what I mean? because they are the best to expose their cult. But those idiots, they choose the one they want to debate with carefully, so they will not get busted so fast and so easy. So look what happened now. We have a book, it's supposedly it's corrupted. The Jews, they believe that Allah, he have a son. His name is Isaiah, not Israel. this is a lie. This is Israel. Israel does not exist in the whole Quran. Here we go, the Arabic says Uzair. And then Muhammad, he says, as we showed you in the hadith, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. So he believed that Allah have a son. If this is what the Jews teach. And then if we check, we cannot find one single Jew believed ever in someone, his name is Uzair, and they believe that he is a son of God. And we challenge any Muslim to show us any reference. Now going back to the laughable claim of the Muslims that the Bible is changed. 
Allah is in the Bible. Allah don't want to protect his Bible. Isn't it this is additional reason for us as a Christian to laugh at Islam? Who is a Muslim can tell us why Allah he sent the Injil and the Torah and he don't want to protect them? Give me a reason, Muslims. And card, if you don't, if you want to change my topic, I will block you. And I can find you. Your prophet says that my nation will be 73 sect. One of them will be truthful and the rest will go to hell. So don't make me send you free shipping and hand it into Allah. Focus with me. If you have an answer for my topic, you are welcome. If you want to post things that have nothing to do with my topic, I will send you to Allah. As simple as that. The Muslim, he come to the chat. He knew that there is some idiot. They love the division, you know, the, the Satan. So he say Catholic, Protestant. So if there is some fool, they will start fighting. It doesn't work here, Abdul. We are not Shia and Sunni killing each other. This is for donkeys. I am not a Catholic. My Catholic brothers are my brothers and sisters. Okay, Palestine. Then act, don't don't act like a donkey. So focus with me. Allah He sent the Torah. Allah He sent the Injil. And the funny is, it says in Arabic, Allah He sent the book, believing in what is between His hands. Look what the Muslim they say, confirming what came before it. But in Arabic it doesn't say that. It says. مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ Believing in what is between his hand. Do you see how they lie? So look at the stupidity here. In one hand, the Muslim, they go frenzy. I like the word frenzy, by the way. They, they, they feed a frenzy in attacking the Bible. Then their stupid frenzy book says that Allah, he sent a book confirming and believing in what is with them and between their hands. And look at the Muslim translation, trying to hide the truth. You know, by the way, the easiest way to get this Abdul busted, you can take this and post it in Google. And you will see in two seconds that it says between his hands. Let us do it. Google translation, peace be upon him. Because Google translation is a software and Muslim translation is satanic, demonic translation trying to hide the truth. Copy paste in the front of your eyes. Hmm. Ah, Google translation is copying what he found in the internet, not giving the correct translation. Let us do this so we can get them busted. I will copy the exact two words, between his hands. See what Google do, right away he find an exact words, translate it in Google, and he post it. So let us do this. We will post only two words. See? The translation is still not correct. It is between his hands. If you copy the word baina alone, I will copy that's the word baina, which means between. Take it, paste it here. And this is the word baina. Baina. Between. If we copy the other word, the second word, yadaihi. We take it here. Oh, let us see. Add it. Let us add it to the previous word. Baina yadehi. We already translate baina to be between yadehi, his hands. You see? So the Quran says something. The Muslim, they say something else. And they translate something else. This is why I say always to you you cannot learn Islam from a Muhammadan. They lie. And in case you do not believe, look at the translation. 
why they are saying confirming what came before it when the verse have the word hands and between his hands there's a huge difference what came before it we do not know you know okay maybe before it was there was maybe it's not to exist no more came before it maybe a long time ago but here it says what is between his hands there's a huge difference Actually, I'm going to do this. I will keep changing translation until we find one Muslim by mistake. He said the truth. Let us see if we can find. This one is saying confirming earlier books. Different one. I will keep changing translation one by one. Came before it. Muhammad Asad. Uh, huh. Look what Muhammad Asad says confirming whatever there still remain of the earlier revelation <laughs> so do you see why they are trying to hide what the quran is saying because this is a stupid verse either you confirm what is between their hands which means what is between their hands it is true and if this is what the arabic is saying then we have to fix it. This is this is an embarrassment. The Quran is a stupid book written by a stupid man. Let us continue. So this guy he had a long line which is not there. Big tal. Mm. Confirming which was revealed by it. Let us continue. Kawari. Revealed before it. Karabula. Uh, proceed it proceed it <laughs> that's a good one confirming what proceed it this is what it says really I mean you disgusting disgusting believers you don't even have the decency to give little translation to be as the Quran saying confirming what was before it here we have was it's not exist no more let us go to Sarwar Confirming the original Bible, brother. The original, this guy, he had the original. See, in Arabic it says what is between his hand, believing in what is between his hand. Suddenly it became confirming the original, brother. Brother Thetar, chapter 3, verse number 3. It says that Allah confirming the book between his hand. And then the brother is naming the creator of the and he say that the verse says confirming what is between it and in x3 x3 in arabic it says that we have to admit but allah he says something and he means something and this is how we get them busted so allah he says something and it means something why allah saying between his hand and you muslim you say something else do you have a little dignity let us continue the trip of corruption who is the one who's corrupt in his book you see when you give false meaning verifying which was before which is before it is that really what the verse is saying I, I, I don't know we finish all the English translation it says Arbery let's go up Ahmad Ali huh, before it Ahmad Raza Khan confirming the book before it, again, Arbery. Confirming what was before it. Community, before it. This is the same. Dariya, Dariyabadi, before it. Hilali Khan, before it. Itani, before it. Khattab, before it. Maududi, earlier book, confirming earlier book, brother. Mabaraka, Baruri, before it. Those we saw them, we showed them already, I think. Karari, before it. Karabala, yeah, we showed those one. Proceed it. But all what you need to do, Just go, copy those words, 
take them to Google Translation and you will find this is what it says. Actually, you know what? I will do this. I will copy the word the day as it is and I will search for it in the Quran. Just to show you how Muslim, they, they, you know, this is the religion of the devil, literally. Literally. So I will post the same exact word in the search engine. Hit. Yadayha. Succession generation. Even this one is just they're lying about. <laughs> Okay, فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ What أَيْدِيهِمْ mean? Let us see. By their own hands. You see? يَدَيْهِ أَيْدِي is the same word. Their own hands. And who is the one who write the book by their own hands? The Muslims. Did Muhammad write the Quran? No. Did even Uthman wrote the Quran? No. Who wrote the, whoever wrote the Quran, they wrote it by their own hands. The Muslim, they will say to you, oh no, they are saying that the one who write his own, uh, you know, his own verses, like he making things up, right? No problem. I can't take it this way. But we have a proof that the whole Quran cannot be from God. From the beginning, from the first chapter to the last chapter. Not by, I don't care really, like you see this, there's somebody he can say, uh, I can claim now to be a prophet and my God, he sent me a book and confirming that the Quran is a lie. But how I can use that against you? You know what I mean? I mean, this is silly. So the Muslim, they come with a book 600 years after trying to take it against us. But do you have a proof? If you have a proof, that will be a proof against you. Why? Because we have tons of verses in the stupid Quran saying that Allah he sent the book, believing in what is with them. Read with me carefully and love. And for some reason, the Muslim here, by mistake, did give the accurate translation. They did not lie. Read carefully. The book, the Quran, confirm what the Jewish and the Christians have with them, is with them. Do you see it? And actually, the word confirm is not accurate because the word musaddiq mean believing and agreeing and confirming, starting with believing. So Allah, he sent the book, believing in what the Christian and the Jews they have. In now, not late, but before. Do you see it? Not many know Arab language. Ah, okay. So how you can worship your God if you do not know the Arab language? And what kind of religion is based in a language? For me, what is important? <clears throat> that when the Muslims, they say that the gospel of Allah and the Torah of Allah, if they ever exist, they are corrupted. They are giving us additional reason to believe that Islam is a fraud. Because if Allah is God, why Allah, he sent 124,000 messenger. Each one of them, he have a book. And then Allah decide not to protect a single one of them except the Quran. This is what the Muslim, they say. How I can trust somebody Imagine, you have somebody here, you have a library. The library used to have 124,000 books. He lost them all except one. Can we call Allah the biggest loser of history? So why Allah, he sent 124,000 books if none of them would be existed? And from this we understand that Islam is a laughable, jokeable, if we can use that word, stupid, 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 stupid ball. <laughs> it's a ball. You shoot it as you want. You push. You put it wherever you want. It is round. It's flexible. It is liquid. You know, you can liquidate it. You can push it in holes. You can, you know, Islam is very flexible when they want. 
this God, his book is corrupted. When they want this God, his book cannot be corrupted. <laughs> Do you see this, Chepeti? I mean, this is a mentally ill religion. It's the same God. So how the same God, his books are corrupted, and the same God, his book is not corrupted. Either this book of this God can be corrupted or it cannot be corrupted. And not only that, if you go to the stupid yellow page of Muhammad, Muhammad, he confirmed that nobody can change the word of Allah. Of Allah. <clears throat> Read carefully. Chapter 6, verse number 34. And this verse speaking about messengers before Muhammad. What it says there? None has the power to alter the word of Allah. <laughs> Isn't this is a stupid religion? Nobody can alter the word of Allah. And those idiots, they shout everywhere, the book of Allah, the gospel, and the Torah is a change, brother. <laughs> you see why we laugh at this we, this is not a religion this is a this is a this is a teen age it's not even a teenage it's not even a kid no one can change the word of allah and then the abdul they, they ask the abdul they will say oh he hint here the quran the hold on it says here about messengers came before muhammad messenger before you have you have been given uh, the lie to and they heard them and then uh, persecuted until our help reached to them none has the power to alter the word of Allah so the whole verse is speaking about messengers who came before Do you see it? So how this is stupid God? He is saying nobody can alter the word of Allah. The word of Allah is all his words. Is the Quran is only word of Allah? So when Abdul, he speak about contradiction, is it? This is a contradiction and this is stupid. No one can change the word of Allah. And then you will find the Abdul screaming in the street saying, no, your Bible is changed. You as a Christian, when you speak to a Muhammadan, you don't argue with him. Don't tell him, no, the Bible is not changed. Just tell him, relax, relax. You know, remember Sheikh Osman, relax. Later, later they get him busted. Relax. Tell him, oh, you are saying the Bible of Allah has been changed. And you right away you will see how the nail is going to be so hard in his bum. He will say, no, 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 I'm talking about you. You say, no, 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 no. You are saying, who is the one who sent the Bible? Isn't it Allah? Who is the one who sent the Injil? Isn't it Allah? So you are saying to us, the Bible of Allah is a chain. So what's my problem? I want to know exactly what is my problem. This is, here is your book. This is your book, Muslims. And he is your God. He is the one who sent it. And you are saying to us, the book of your God has changed. So what's my problem? Any Muslim can help me? And the Christians, because they do not know how to debate Muslims, they, st they take the defense mood and they start saying, no, it's not corrupted. I mean, I agree with him. It says, yeah, your book, your God is a loser. The second you say that, you know, he will change the topic. He will switch. They want to talk about it. When you say to me that your God, he promised that nobody can change his words. And you say to me that Allah is the one who sent the gospel. It's called Injil, which is weird. I mean, why Allah, he chose the Greek word. Was Jesus born into the Greek people?
in Indonesian translation, they added a bracket, promises after word of Allah. Um, I don't know what that means exactly. Promises? Okay. But anyway, Allah is saying nobody can alter his word. That's it. Whatever. Promise or not promise, it's okay. Let us go to different level of stupidity. Shall we? This verse will make any Muhammadan lay down in the floor and his leg is up and he will give birth even if he's a male. Even if he is a male, they will give birth. And by the way, you will have a twin. Look at this stupid God. Allah gave the Jewish the Torah. He gave it to who? He gave it to Moses. Wonderful. Therein was guidance and light. Yes, you know, Moses, when you open the Torah, there's a lot of light come from there. By its standard, have been the judge the Jews, by the prophet who bowed between two brackets as in Islam. They are Muslims. I mean, this is funny religion. So the, why you call them Jews? I mean, you just say Jews. You stupid, you just say Jews. So why you call them Muslims? And then Allah, he entrusted the doctors and the rabbis to protect the book. Who is a Muslim agree with this verse? Who is a Muslim? Agree with this verse. Anyone knows what is the problem? Let's see. I, I, I want one of you to help me. Who noticed what is the problem with this stupid verse? Who have a sharp image, a vision, sorry. What is the problem with this verse? Oh, the Muslim, they add the bracket always because the Quran is so clear, supposedly. And the more bracket you they add, the more they prove that the Quran is made in perfect Arabic. <laughs> Anyone notice what the problem? Nobody? Okay. Do you see the word entrusted? Do you see it? Entrusted. What entrusted means? Somebody help me. What the word entrusted mean? When somebody says, I trusted you, what does that mean exactly? Trust have a meaning, right? What the word trust mean? Think about it and then you will know what I'm talking about. Trust, it means I have faith, thank you very much. I have faith on you to be good, correct? To be good, not to be bad. So look what happened. Allah, he trusted the Jews. In what? In the protection of Allah book. Anyone knows what that means? Islam destroyed in this verse. If you ask a Muslim, do Allah knew the future? What the Abdu will say? Sure, Allah, he knew the future. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, he knew the future. Okay. Allah, he knew the future. Do Allah knew that those Jews, they are not trustworthy? <laughs> 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 so
So Allah, he have faith on the rabbi and the scholars to protect his book. But the rabbi and the scholar, they gave Allah a finger. And the Muslim and every single Muslim, he gave us a speeches about Allah is all knowing and Allah knows best. Do you see how Allah knows best? Do you notice how Allah, know, Allah knows a lot of best? Are you kidding me? This is the best of the best. So Allah knows best. And yet he trusted the rabbi and the doctors of the law, the high rank of the Jews, in the protection of Allah book. Who is a Muslim want to tell me, did Allah made a wrong decision? Did Allah made a wrong choice? Was Allah wrong in his choice? So when a Muhammadan, I hope you guys are taking notes. You see, if you want to learn really how you can debunk this stupid cult so easy, I advise you, like today we have a topic, right? We have a title, the Bible, and the corruption and the change. You open little document, and whatever I show on the screen, make a note, save the file, and name it. Once you need reference, you just open the file, and you have it all there. So, what this verse is saying, that Allah do not know best, Allah is stupid. And the proof of that, you see, I can say, the Muslim can say, well, Allah wanted to test them. Allah, he wanted to test them you know test them it says here entrusted them he entrusted them and trust coming from faith on them so your god allah have a wrong faith and obviously this is an act of somebody he do not know tomorrow he do not know the future and allah entrusted them in a specific job which is the protection of Allah book. Does it say Allah book? It says that, right? It says Allah book. So how the book belong to Allah and the protection of the book is given to someone he will die tomorrow or a year after or 10 years after or 50 years after. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let us say, one of you, he says to me, Christian Prince, I trust you to protect this book. But that can be valid if I'm going to stay alive forever. But all of us, we knew that the human beings are limited in life. And their life is very short compared to what this age of the universe is. So when he entrusted those rabbis, and they are specific people. How they can protect the book forever? They are just a bunch of rabbis. They will die 10 years, 20 years, they will be dead. And those are rabbi, which means already they are old. You see, it says it clearly, they are the doctors of the law and they are the rabbis. You don't become a rabbi and you are a kid, a teenage. Those are already old men. So they will have a life maybe 20, 30 years more, 40 years more. But they cannot be entrusted to protect the book of God for their life is not forever. So here you see it again, the stupidity of the so-called book of Allah. They complain about corruption of the Torah and the gospel. Then the same book, confirm the Torah and the Gospel and the same book says that Allah trusted the Jews to protect the Torah and the, the Torah here at least you know and the rabbi and uh, even it says he trusted them you know not to fear any man right but trust 
trust is a big word. When somebody trusts somebody, it's mean in that moment he believes that those people are really, really good. They are trustworthy. So when Allah He trusted the rabbis, obviously based on what Muslim they say today that the Torah is a change. Obviously, Allah trust was a foolish trust. Therefore, Allah is a fool. Any Muslim don't agree with me? Uh, yeah, Kim, Second Peter two twenty one. You know, just focus with me now. We don't want to go to the Bible. You see, there is a time for the Bible, and now focus on the reference we are giving you. False prophet, you do not. You know, in Islam, you do not need to prove Muhammad to be a false prophet. This guy, everything he says, stupid. You see, Islam is the easiest stupid cult to defeat. The problem I find the difficulty with Islam that all the media in the world, YouTube, look, I cannot collect donation here, right? If you are a Muslim, you collect donation, you have advertising. I cannot say a word. I have to. I cannot even keep my videos. Muslim, they have videos in teaching terrorism, hatred, and their video is there, and nobody take it down. So. Our problem is not how hard to expose the, the garbage of Muhammad. Our problem is that there is a major force, satanic force, in this earth, sponsoring this cult, and they don't want the voice of the truth to be heard. This is the truth. If I have a channel speaking, supporting Islam, none of my video will be taken down, and all of you, you know that. And I will never need to delete one video. Isn't it this is telling us all the story? Look, do you see in my videos I'm teaching hatred? Am I teaching violence? So why they take my videos down? Why YouTube side with them? Why Facebook side with them? Why Twitter side with them? The devil is additional proof that Islam is satanic. All those who support Islam, they are the devil. They speak of a freedom of speech, but the freedom of speech is only for Muslims. Or for atheists. Like you see from those who speak against Islam, you will not find one atheist he speak against Islam, they take down his donation. Like Abdullah Samir or apostate prophet. Why? Because they are atheists. Did you see how, you know, the discrimination? So the atheists who they are in change of those programs, they are the devil. They are evil. If I am an atheist, my channel will be fine. And they try their best to kick you out of their system. And this is what happened to David Wood. David Wood, you know, he, you know, they took the donation off, they took the advertising, they took, they took, they took, and they keep sending him warning after warning, you know, take this video down, take that video down. So the guy, he gave up. But that will not work with me. You take this channel, I will make 10 channels, who cares? Now about subscribers, I believe that YouTube support Muslims and Muslims they support Muslims. You see, if I am a Muslim, how many my channel should have? I think this channel have maybe 80,000, something like that. I'm not sure. It doesn't show, you know, I need to check because I stopped this using channel for, for a while. And I think the other channel, Christian Prince, I think already we passed maybe the nine, then uh, maybe 100,000. I'm not sure. I'll, we need to check it out. If somebody can go right now, look, you can tell me what is the number right now. And that one we stopped, you know, using it. And we came here. So we can switch between them. But the truth is that Islam is very easy to debunk and to prove to be stupid. And we are victorious. 
even you see how many people they try to promote Islam just to make money a reaction like there is a guy we made a video about him from Albania Serbia or I don't know where he is from a reaction of a Christian for Allah he is the true God yet the guy he keep calling himself a Christian just to get click because he knew that the Muslim they will flood his video they will share it so there's a lot of people too who they are obviously evil satanic they are willing to sell themselves to make money and ask yourself why not I mean there's women they are taking off their clothes for a for a dollar and there is men they are no better they are doing the same they take their clothes and they are naked for a dollar they strip themselves from any value just to make a dollar 90,000 okay yeah because we stop it was something you know 90 something we stopped going there so the number did not grow and we don't have the videos there maybe soon I will switch back there and we go so both of them they have a close numbers I think uh, do we have any Muslim here he think he can refute us anyone any Muslim can answer the stupidity of Allah and do me a favor when a Muslim he says to you that the Bible is corrupt right away say to him yeah the Bible of Allah is corrupt and right away look at his face you will see how his face will become like a watermelon without water Just agree with him. He, he will put him immediately in trouble. He will try to explain it to him. You don't need to explain. I agree. Allah, he could not protect his book. Allah was a foolish God. He trusted even the Jews. I can show you the verses. Chapter 5, verse number 44. You see, I trust a bank and I put all my money in the bank. And then I found that this bank is a fraud. Who is the fool? The bank or the one who trusted the bank? Do you understand what I'm saying? When you trust, and then your trust came to be false trust. How you can tell me that Allah is God? Well, watermelon actually doesn't describe a Muslim too much, except that a watermelon have holes. You see, do you know that the Muslim, they have fatwas that you can have sex with watermelon? I'm serious. I mean, this is a religion. It's not only satanic. It's sexual, weird. I mean, why in the world anyone, how in the world that there is a man, he is going to have sex with watermelon? And you will find that the Shia, they are making fun of the Sunni. Because the Sunni, they are teaching that it's okay to have sex with watermelon. And they are making fun of the Shia, that the Shia, they practice is still muta. So the Shia, they are the Sunni. Well, do we need witnesses when you marry a water woman? Is it lawful to have sex with watermelon? She is not mature. Is it okay if she is under the age of six? There's a website. Let me see what the name it was. I forgot the name. I think Shia Pan, Shia Pan something. Let me find it for you. So you die laughing. I don't want you to die. I'm just joking. Uh, the morality of Sunni. Here we go. I found it. Shia Pan. Revealing the truth, chapter 8, example of Sunni morality. Sunni is the Muslim Sunni sect. The Shia and Sunni, they are the enemies. And if you read, you will go crazy. You will die laughing. This is a dialogue between Muslim Sunni and Muslim Shia. Fighting against each other, exposing each other, and trying to win 
let us say, uh, you know, Shia trying to make Sunni become Shia and Shia trying to make uh, etc. Like you know, against each other. So look what the, what this uh, what this here says. Third example of Sunni morality, Sunni ulama ulama means scholars, has ruled or have ruled on the pr uh, uh, principality of having sex with watermelon. And here is the reference. Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, if a man make a hole in a watermelon or a piece of da, even da, like how Allah can you trust, you see we are using the word trust now, can you trust a Muslim to buy from him a watermelon? Can you? Most likely is going to be used and sexually abused. So read with me. Educate yourself sexually. Let us see how many of you will go to Walmart immediately and look for watermelon. So watermelon or a piece of the women Muslim women, don't let your husband get close to the door. You are making bread, he will have sex with it. Piece of dough or leather skin, what the heck? Or a statues, don't take a Muslim to the museum. You take a Muhammadan to the museum, he will have sex with the statues. And sex with it then this is the same as what we have said about be, uh, about type of masturbation so having sex with motormen and brother it's a masturbation i.e it is halal no? so now there is a double halal with the watermelon it's halal to eat it it is halal to eat it and those people they are busy chasing christian to say to them that your book is corrupted <laughs> and this is their biggest scholars of Islam. Here the Shia, they are asking the Muslim Sunni some questions, serious questions. So look what they said. All the Muslims should certainly be grateful that Ibn al-Qayyim has offered advice on the easiest way to masturbate. So thank you, Ibn al-Qayyim. And clearly, Ibn al-Qayyim has done a lot of personal research in this issue. This is the ruling of the saved sect. So the Muslim Sunni, they call themselves, they are the saved sect. Certainly, temporary marriage, which Muhammad, he taught Muslims to do, and then the Muslim Sunni, they claim that he forbid it, but the Shia, they still practice it. So now you understand what they are fighting over. Shia still practice temporary marriage which is not marriage really, it's sexual one night, one hour contract. With the women is haram, but uh, like, you know, temporary marriage with watermelon is halal. In this defense, perhaps, Ibn al-Qayyim only meant that it's allowed to marry watermelon with the intent of divorcing it for doing muta with the watermelon. Would, they, uh, would clearly be an act of fornication. <laughs> so, you know, the, the Shia, they are returning the excuse the Sunni they gave about muta. The Sunni, they say, if you practice muta now, it's a fornication. But the Sunni, they have different form of muta. You know, they have the Waju friend, one day stand. We have a video of Mimi Hijab. He was saying to the Muslim Sunni, you go and marry somebody for two minutes, five minutes. We play the video many times. You can search for the video, Muhammad Hijab Abu Khadija. In English, Abu Khadija. Khadija. You will find it right away. So this is Islam. And the Muslim, they are coming after us, saying, you change your book. Now, if I want to read the rest of this page, you will go crazy. So I'm not going to read it. I'm going to post it for you so you can enjoy reading it later for your sexual orientation. Because until now, none of you, he know anything about sex yet. The only one is expert with the art of sex 
is the Muhammadan and the Muslim Sunni specifically. Watermelon. And then the conversation here continue. It says, Well, it seems that Nasibi, this is how the Shia, they call the Muslim Sunni. Nasibi logic, have sex with any women as one can afford is utterly immoral. So this is what the Muslim believe actually. Having sex with as many women as you can, as long you can afford. You see it? Prostitution. This is Islam. And then, but having sex with as many watermelon as one can afford is not. Based on this, let us ask him some questions about ahkam related, ahkam mean rules uh, related to having sex with watermelon. Are there any conditions as the age of the watermelon? This is a good question. She's young, she's old, she is virgin. So should we look for like certain age? For example, is it allowed to perform marriage with, in, with the intent of divorce with a newly grown watermelon? Or must one wait until the, war, the water woman is nine years old. <laughs> I mean, this is the mockery. This is, this is religion. Both of them, they believe in the same garbage, by the way. This is the truth. Muhammad, he married Aisha at the age of six. He was molesting her until the age of nine. At the age of nine, he did boom, boom. So this guy is asking the Sunni, so shall we wait for the watermelon to become in the age of intercourse? Here he asked, must, must it be a biased watermelon or it is a permissible to contract marriage with intent of divorce with watermelon that is known to get around. <laughs> Sound like you are lying about with the minon. You know, Ant, I think you chose your name for a reason. I think there's an ant in your pant. I'm showing the reference you donkey. I'm showing the website. I'm showing the Shia website. In sound you are lying about the minute. Don't get married. Your wife, she will leave you second day. The sound you are lying about what I'm on, okay? But so I'm reading the screen, this is your website. I mean, do you see the stupidity of these people? I'm showing them what is written in their website, and then they say to me, Sound you are lying about what, uh, what I'm on, okay? You sound you are lying. Hmm. It's a lie, it's not true. A lie. Hmm. We Muslim, we like watermelon. We don't have sex with them. We respect them. We protect them, actually. Actually, in the Middle East, we have nothing out for orphan watermelon, brother. And not only that, brother. We don't allow anyone to kiss them. We don't allow anyone to touch them, even if their ass is so red, brother. And aunt, they to us, you know, and like, you know, you sound like you're lying. I mean, I don't know. I show them the websites. I show them the reference. We show them this is your website, and then they say to me, "You're lying." How we can how you can deal with this? Uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's an ant in your pant. All right, this is why they keep moving. May a bias a brother share his watermelon with other another bias brother? <laughs> like, can we share the same watermelon around? <laughs> I mean, look at the conversation and they say, hey, by the way, is the text clear? You see, I return to the old method of broadcast because I think this is way better than, you know, that one is confusing. It's hard to deal with. I mean, this is easier, you know, and I will find a way for taking calls later. We will see. If I have to use Skype, I will use Skype, but I will not use Skype again. The one, the, the one I used to use at the debate TV, forget about that one. Because I've had like 20,000, I don't know, 30,000 users, I don't know, maybe 100,000 people texting me there, adding me, and it's really hard to deal with that one. So I will start afresh, and maybe after a few years too, we will delete it too. Uh, uh, guys, you know, I am single, and I have to be honest with you. I'm thinking about buying watermelons. I mean, you cannot resist the temptation. 
having sex with the statues, da, with what? Piece of da? You can't trust the Abdul even with the bread? Bread? You leave him with the watermelon, he if it. You leave him with the bread, he if it. Leather skin? Statues? You take him, don't take him to Rome. What happened to this Abdul when he arrived first time to Rome? There's statues everywhere. He will have sex with the statues of Caesar. He will be holding Caesar from his behind. And they will say to him, what are you doing, man? Is that how much you love him? A statues? You take a Muslim to the museum, he will paint every statue with his sperm. And then, you know, the conversation continue here. It's getting more educated. The, the education is getting more like more, more deep. So let us remember the word of Dr. Salama, Salama, quoted in the beginning of his book. So this guy is writing against the Shia. Muta, on the other hand, is an open license for sexual pleasure with as many women as one can financially afford. The women who engaged in muta are hired women. Thus, it can be performed with all women, irrespective of their age, character, conduct, or religion. It requires no witnesses, nor it is there any obligation on man part to provide food and shelter for the women. And here we ask yourself, as long this is how bad the muta is, so how the Quran allow it? Do you see the hypocrisy? Your Muslim friend, he said he do not know about what I mean. Did your Muslim friend, do you know that you are an ant? Huh? Do you knew that? Be careful. I think they are going to have sexual intercourse even with ants. CP closed Skype because he is a coward. My Skype is open for the last 20 years. Where you been, potato Fifi? And you know what? I can open it for you if you bring me the real Fifi. <laughs> Just get lost, son of Muta. My Skype is open for the last 20 years. Where you been? Potato. And by the way, it's still open. I can open it now. Do you want to play? Do you have water running with you? Do you have a hole in it? Or I make it a hole? What a coward, son of Muta. I challenge the Christian Prince to debate me face to face. You face to face, ass to ass, you coward. All what you need to do is just call me. I mean, even if ultimate fault can call me, who is left? This is how easy it is. Yeah, no exaggeration, 20 years. Do you know how long I'm fighting this garbage cult? Since the internet started. <laughs> no, no exaggeration <laughs> I have a video of me in uh, 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 played in the Iranian government TV they made a program about Islamophobia look, look, look who is talking about the phobia and from the old internet they could not find anyone present the Islamophobia better than Christian Prince. In the TV of the mullahs of Iran, the official government, and for me, I did not hear about it. Then somebody says to me, did you see your uh, video in the government of Iran? And you will find at that time I was using a camcorder camera to record my screen. Not like now it's easy, there's live streaming, you know. 
no it was very hard job and you convert the file and then it, the, we have the dsl connection which is so slow and you lose connection and you try to load the file again and the file cannot be loaded it was horrible not like now i mean things change very huge and at that time too we don't have even english translation i have to show everything in arabic all those websites are new so let's continue here and here the Nasibi, which is a Sunni, maybe we should call the Nasibi from now on. It seemed that they can have sex with as many women as one can afford, is utter, utterly immoral, but having sex with many watermelon. So now the whole discussion is about a Muslim Shia, they can have sex with as many they can afford. But isn't it the truth is that the Muslim Sunni, they do the same? If there is a limit how many women you can have sex with in Islamic Sunni religion, there's no limit. You can have four at the same time, but you can divorce those four every two seconds if you want. And you can replace them with other two, four. He and I think it's time to block you. Your friend, he told you. Okay, I want you to go and sit with your friend. You're acting like a child, so I have no time to see your text. My friend told you that it's not true. Okay. Uh, let us see. Example of Sunni morality, a Salafi woman, which means Sunni women, she can suckle a Salafi man with a beard. And actually, I have to admit, I like this. You know, I like hunting, uh, shooting, uh, hiking, and... I, I'm not going to talk about the last one. Uh, let us read, let's read, let us read. Salafi women can suckle a Salafi man with a beard. By the way, I'm Salafi and I have a beard. So I'm ready. I have all the requirement and the qualification. And then the Muslim, they come to us and they say, your Bible is corrupt. I mean, do you see the stupidity? All the garbage we see in front of us. For me, by the way, I don't like to accuse the Quran to be corrupted. The reason is, if we keep saying that, the Muslims by time, they will agree. They will find that this is the only way to can escape the reality that Muhammad is a false prophet. Because then they will say, you see, okay, the Quran have mistakes and stupid things in it because the Quran is corrupted. But the original Quran was true Quran. We don't want to go there. We don't want to go there. I want to keep the Quran to be protected. So this is the Quran which is protected. And those are the verses of Allah. And the verses of Allah is so clear saying that Allah is a fool. He entrusted the Jews to protect the book. How God can be God, yet his trust was a foolish trust. How the Muslim, they say Allah, he knew the future, but he could not recognize that he is giving the wrong trust to the wrong people. Otherwise, we can show tons of reference and proofs that the Quran changed. There's a book of an Imam, big scholar. His name is Al Suyuti. Al Suyuti. He have endless number of quotation. He put them in his book to make it easier for people to see. Of reference about the Quran being lost and corrupt. And when the Muslim, they try to defend, let me show you an example of the defense. Here it says that
Ibn Abi Kaab, a man his name, and Abi Ibn Kaab, he says, how, uh, how, like how much, how many, the chapter of Al-Ahzab. This is the same chapter I speak about, you can do work as a pimp, if you remember. He said, what we read now is about 70 something verses. And then he continues saying, and I did read it with the Prophet of Allah, equal size to the chapter of the cow, even longer. And in it, it was the verses of stoning to death, a rajam. And then here it says, and this is lead us to understand that the chapter of Ahzab was a very big chapter, the same as the cow, but most of it is abrogated. <laughs> You see how they try to to now so it's abrogated. If we go right now to the chapter of Al-Ahzab, this is the chapter thirty-three. Let us go to the end. Look how long it is seventy-three verses. Seventy-three, the last one is seventy-three. See it? Okay, wonderful. We just saw that the chapter of Al-Ahzab used to be equal to the cow chapter and even longer. Let us go to the cow chapter. Chapter number two. And again, we go to the last verse. This is the longest chapter in the Quran. Look how long it is. Very big. So look what happened now. How many verses this chapter is? Is 286. 286. How many is Al Ahzab now? Let us go to the other one. 73. So did you notice how many are lost? And then the Muslim, every one of them, he tried to fix it. Some, they say, oh, most of it is abrogated, like, well, even if it's abrogated where it is. Then they say to you, oh, don't you know that the Quran had, there's a three kind of abrogation. One of them is abrogation of recitation. Why you abrogate recitation? If you abrogate the rule, and how in the world are you saying to me, there was more than 200 verses, all of them about rules? And they are abrogated in one chapter. <laughs> so this God, he made 200 verses and he ripped them apart and he says, don't for, show me where it says that. If we calculate 286 minus 73, there's 213 verses missing in one chapter, just in one chapter. Just in one chapter, 213. And how the Muslim they try to fix it, they say Allah knows best. We can go to different hadith. Actually, there is a uh, there is a verse in the Quran. You see, the Muslim they say is the Quran preserved and blah blah. You know, we laugh, you know. But but and for me, as I said, I'm not interested to prove it not to be preserved. 
but uh, we, I'm sharing education with you. So in case you need it, you use it. Uh, if you remember, there's a verse in the Quran. If you go to the video of this uh, potato Uthman, he says the Quran preserved word by word, right? Just to show you a very clear proof. Chapter 36, verse number 38. So guys, by the way, which one is better? The previous broadcast or this one as a screen and sound? I think this one is better, right? I think this one is way better, is more clear. The screen is easy to see. You know, that's why I'm back to it. So, do you see what the verse is saying? The verse is saying, the sun run to its course. No, say his course. I mean, have you ever heard of such? The sun runs his course. What kind of translation? What the heck is that? Let us go different translator. The sun became his now, his course. And the sun runs, runs, and on into a resting place for him. Change the translator. I mean, what the heck is this? What those people are trying? I mean, are they are they using like software to translate? Look like it. And the sun runs on its fixed course for a term. Okay. So does it say it run or it says it doesn't run? Somebody help me. Does it say it run to a fixed course or it says it doesn't run to a fixed course? This is a very important reference. I'm going to share it with you and I want all of you to save it. So, and the sun runs on its fixed course. So this is what the Quran we have in front of us it says. Let us go to Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir. I need to find, because you know, I, I did format my computer. So I need to find the page of Ibn Kathir. What this page is here, here now? Uh, what happened? Okay, Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir. All right. We found the website that is added to the bar. So we don't need to look for it next time. All right. So in Ibn Kathir, let us show you. Oh, we closed the page by mistake. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right. So this is Ibn Kathir. Let us put it on the screen again. Chapter 36. We go to 38. I want you to take reference. I will pause the link for you. Ibn Kathir is saying exactly what we were saying in that uh, uh, Quran, in the Quran they have now, the, the popular Quran, let's say, because there's many Quran. And the sun runs into a fixed course. So it says the same, nothing changed. All right. Let us go down a little bit. And look what it says. And the sun runs with no fixed fix course for a term. Do you see it? Do you see the opposite? Guys, did you see the opposite? 
So Ibn Kathir is reporting two recitation of the Quran. One is saying the sun runs to a fixed course and the other one saying and the sun runs with no fixed course for a term. How that can be? How both of them can be exist? Go back a little bit, huh? Up, 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 little bit. On its fixed course for a term. So the sun run to fixed course. Its fixed course beneath the throne. That's what it says. And the sun runs into a fixed course for a term. Okay. We go down a little bit, little bit. It says at the recitation, "Washamsu tajri la mustaqarrala." You see the word "la" here. "La" mean no. No settling place for it, and that changed everything. See, the Muslim they, they lie, they say that the Qurans are sent down in seven recitation, and they are not really different Quran, it's just different dialect. But this is not a dialect, this is the same dialect of Quraysh, nothing changed. And the word la means there's no fixed course. And that is totally the opposite of the same verse which is in the Quran of Saudi Arabia today. So which one of them is true? This is an example of their lies. Because it cannot be both. You see, they cannot say this is metaphorical. This is about the movement of the sun. And Ibn Kathir, he explained, the Prophet was riding his donkey. And he had a guy behind him. Because you can't sit in front of Muhammad, remember, his private part is always uh, busy. He's a prophet. Come on. So when he was sitting behind the prophet, the prophet asked him, do you know where the son goes? Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar means the father of the ants. Do you know where the son sat? I said, Allah and his messengers knows best. He said, it's set under the throne of Allah. It goes and prostrate itself beneath Allah's throne. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is a fraud because he think that the sun is moving every day from point A to point B and point B is under the ass of Allah. May Allah ask you, Abdul. But now the problem is bigger because in the Quran, which we showed you in the other side, it says, and the sun runs into a fixed course. So it runs to a fixed course. But there is other reading for the Quran, which Muslim cannot dispute, says the opposite. And the sun runs with no fixed course for a term. How we can fix that? I think all the water of Milan in the world, they cannot fix this hole which is a hole in the narrative. Do you remember Mr. Hole in the narrative? Hmm? How big this hole is? Do the sun runs to a fixed course or the sun does not run for a fixed course? How both recitation can be true? And why they lie to us, they say it's just different dialect. Yeah, all the close friend of Muhammad, they are father of something, you know. So the Abu Dhar is the father of the ant. Abu Huraira, the father of the cats. Muhammad, his last name is dog, Kilab. His wife, the daughter of Jahish, which means donkey. It's a, it's a zoo. Do we have any Muslim who have an objection? If you have an objection, don't forget to object, because that would make you Muslim. We believe without understanding. I object. You object what? I don't know. Whatever you say. But it's not me who is saying that. This is Ibn Kathir. I don't object. I don't care Ibn Kathir. What Ibn Kathir? Ibn Kathir is a Jew. Actually, there's a proof that he was a Hindu. He's a Hindu from Brazil. All of Brazil are Hindus. You know, they are Hindu like, you know. The unit thing. 
Abdul, do you know where is Brazil? Yes, Brazil, I know where is Brazil. It is in, you know, the Zimbabwe. It's where the Amazon coming, and there's the Nile River, and you know, there is a uh, Euphrates. What the heck? All of those things is in Zimbabwe? You know, are you sure? Yeah, absolutely, I'm sure. You see, in the old days, when I debate Muslims, if you notice, I used to say, are you sure? These days, I'm not using this word no more. Did you ask yourself why? Because I noticed the second I say to Abdul, are you sure? He knew that he is going to do, to, to, to have a big poo-poo. So they hang up, you know? So I stopped using that word because now he knew that it's time to be spanked. So I stopped using it like, are you sure? You know? And then Abdul, he says, yeah, absolutely, I'm sure. Why you are keep repeating, huh? But now they learn that when I say that word, it's mean an earthquake. It's better to flee. So they hang up and they leave. So I stop using the, are, are you sure? So Muslims, are you sure that the sun does not run to a fixed course or it face to a fixed course? Anyone? And you know, if you are laughing about my geography, I'm just learning from Prophet Muhammad. You see, Prophet Muhammad, he went to heaven and he found in the heaven of Allah, in up in the sky, in the sky, brother, in the sky. That Sihan wa Jihan and Nile and Euphrates are in heaven, in the sky. You don't believe it? Read it. The guy he went to seven heaven in the top of a flying donkey. And what he discovered? He discovered that Sihan wa Jihan, wa the Nile River and Euphrates, they are coming from under the tree of Allah. And then you ask yourself, did Muhammad really go to heaven or he went to Ethiopia? And Nile River is in Ethiopia and Euphrates is in the north of Syria, south of Turkey. How that in happen? And Sihanu and Jihan is the same. Any Abdul can tell us what happened. Did Muhammad he go to really to the heaven or Ethiopia? And then, by the way, ah, this is explain why Muhammad. You see, remember the story. There is a chapter in the Quran. It's called the chapter of the genie. The chapter of the genie. The funny, the Muslim they say nobody can make Quran like Allah. And then you find the chapter of the genie. All the conversation is the genie talking. But anyway, if you remember, once upon the time, the Prophet was a traveling. He found a group of, a, of, a, of a black people. In Arabic, they called them Azut. Very dark, with very dark black. And brothers and sisters, do you know what those black guys did to the Prophet? They start riding him. So I am thinking, maybe since Muhammad he went to Euphrates, and where, sorry, where the Nile River is coming from, I think this is where he met those black people. And they were naked. And they were riding Muhammad all day long. All day long. And let me give you the reference. So you can use Google Translation, peace be upon him. Just open it in browser of Google. And you can click at Google Translation and you will find the reference. A bunch of black guys, they were riding Prophet Muhammad all day long. To the point at the end of the day, he cannot move. And you know, it says Rakibu. You know Rakibu? Oh boy, I have to use my heart now. You guys, why you are doing that to me? I mean, you are forcing me to use my skills against my will. I mean, come on.
That's not even fair. See, I mean, why they do that to me? Why? Is that because I'm like an Arab and I'm very like kind and nice? You know? So, Rakibu, let us, uh, uh, you know, draw it for you. Draw it. I know, I know, all of you, you cannot wait to see my drawing. I'm born gifted, by the way. Since I was a kid, I was like one day old. You know, my mom, she told me, like I took the, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, my dad, he have a B7, and I took it and I shoot and I start drawing in the sky with the B7, you know. So like I, I'm artist since born, you know. Since I was born, uh, I was in Abdullah. I was born uh, artistic, and this is a true story. If you don't kiss, you don't believe me. And who cares if you believe me or not? Anyway, so this is a Prophet Muhammad. In order to ride him, he have to go in his four, in his legs and his feet. And the guys, those African guys, according to the story, the one I gave you in the website, they were riding him. I don't know how many of them they were riding him in the same time. This is one of them, his legs is down. This is the second one. The prophet is strong, by the way. I mean, come on. The guy, he can have six, like he have the power of 40 men. So you can imagine how many he can handle. So the hadith says in the, the, in the uh, reference we gave you, they were riding the prophet, a group of azot, which is very black people, all day long. The first time I did read this, I asked myself, how in the world, how in the world, this is can be happening? And how in the world that the Muslim, they say, they filter anything is insulting to the Prophet. Remember, when the Muslim wrote, wrote the books about Muhammad, they said, like Ibn Ishaq, he said that anything is not suitable to be written, I took it off. So this is after the filtration. A group of black men, they rode Muhammad all day long. And they were naked. They were what? They were wearing no clothing. And this is the reference in the front of you. The book of Musnad Imam Ahmad. Let me use Google Translation. Value number one, page number 399. And here you see the story from the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. This guy, he claimed that he was with the Prophet of Islam when this has happened. So there's a group of black people. Let's see if the translation will come right. You see, they were wearing no clothes on them. Uh, yeah, the translation is silly. It's not really right, you know. But what you can do, I mean, we have to use Google. Maybe the best is to, to copy the, the text like line by line and uh, translate because sometimes when you put the whole uh, page together, the translation come weird. Uh, but let's see where it says they were writing him all day long. Ah. Look what it says here. This person, he was terrified, the companion of Muhammad. And he wrote the Quran, by the way. This guy is a Quran writer. Or he is a reciter for the Quran. Uh, they were writing Muhammad all the way since the morning until night. And then the Prophet, he messenger, he came back. Look what happened. The messenger came back. And he was in pain because they rode him all night and all day or all day 
uh, where it says that they rode him. I'm trying just to read this stupid translation. It is, uh, you know, he came with heavy pain. Here we go. So the Messenger of Allah, he came with heavy pain. Almost he cannot even move. Because they rode him all day. And for sure, translation, as I said, is coming horrible. The best way is to take the, the text, like few lines at the same time, and pause them in Google one by one. I think that is the best way to get a translation. Uh, so anyway, when the Muslims, they say, uh, this is the same guys I blocked, he is just a troll. He called himself a princess now. He was a guy, he became a female by the power of Allah. Well, I hope they will rode you, you know, just go to the Nile River and you get what you deserve. So when somebody, he says to you, the Bible is corrupt, don't defend it. Say to him, the Bible of Allah is corrupt. Let everybody laugh. The second you say that to a Muslim, the Muslim, he will change his mind. He will change the topic. He don't want to talk about it no more. When a Muhammadan he says that the Christians and the Jews they change the word of Allah. The Quran, chapter 6, verse number 34, chapter 10, verse number 64, says it clearly nobody can alter the word of Allah. And this message was about messengers who came before Muhammad. So, how the Quran says nobody can change the power of the, the word of Allah, and the Muslim they say, No, you can. And if they say to you, this is about the Quran, well, the verse is so clear, speaking about messengers before Muhammad. And he did not say the Quran, he says, nobody can change the words of Allah. Is the Quran only is the word of Allah or the gospel and the Torah as Muslim they claim? Then we go to the verses about Allah, he entrusted the Jews. Allah, he entrusted the Jews. To do what? He entrusted the Jews to protect the Torah. Was Allah aware that his trust is stupid? So if Allah is the one who made such a mistake, is that a mistake? Muslims, is that a good, is that a mistake or a bad, is that a bad decision, a mistake, a wise decision? Somebody tell me. Allah trusted the Jews to protect the Torah. He trusted specifically the rabbis and the doctors, the high scholars. Did Allah make the right decision? Any Muslim can help? The word of trust is very clear mean he have faith that they are good you trust people only when you have faith you believe them you believe they are good when you trust somebody you give him your money you go to the bank you give them the money you're not even worried about it why because you trust that your money is safe but if that is not the case if you want to give it to your neighbor you will be worried about your neighbor taking the money and never show up again My friend, Barahuta, why you have to repeat the same thing 1,000 times? We saw it. Come on. I mean, at least say something useful. So, when Allah, he say he entrusted, what about you make a comment about what I'm saying? Instead of repeating the same thing. You know why the Muslims say the Bible is not changed? Because we don't have four wives. Say something useful. Allah, he trusted, Allah, he made a bad decision or good decision, Muslims? So take this note, 
chapter 5, verse number. Here we go, before you on the screen. 44. 44. How the stupid Allah he trust the Jews to protect his book. Do Allah knew the future? If Allah he knew the future and then he says he trusted them, that means his future was not right. His vision of the future is false. Allah do not know the future. Do we have any Abdul? Anyone have a question before we finish for today? You see, because we have too many production, production, yeah, production, not too many people are joining. It's okay. You know, I can slow down. I'd like, you know, maybe don't do video tomorrow, but I prefer to do more, even if there is not enough people watching. Um, you know, doing the right thing is always a good thing. I hope people will learn, people will take notes, and they will learn.